So yeah, I, I, I left the, the stage to Jose uh, for the beginning of the presentation. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Jose Fernandez from uh, General Electric Renewable Energy. Uh, so I'm with uh, Guillaume Takun from uh, Onyx. Uh, I'm really happy to be in this conference with, uh, conference with you to share our experience regarding uh, virtual reality as a whole applied to trade. Uh, so let's start with the uh, beginning. Uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide, please. Next. Yeah. This works. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we're on slide two. Jose. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, so, uh, how did we get to consider virtual reality to implement trainings? Uh, well, it was as simple as trying to continuously improve our way to train people. Really, um, in fact, it was easy to evaluate virtual reality impact as we already had the criteria to improve the quality of our. Uh, I would say classic trainings. We just had then to assess virtual reality against each of these criteria. Uh, you can see them here. Uh, I uh, listed them all. Uh, the most obvious uh, is cost, of course. And an industrial product can be very costly, so it can represent an important training investment to buy one. Uh, creating a VR interactive 3D twin object of the product can be then a much cheaper uh, alternative. Uh, back to the, uh, I would say, classic training approach. If you bought the product, you had budget to do that for the training, uh, then it's not over, as it can be a large object that may fill your training room or hall almost completely. It means the logistics to bring it safely into the training center represent additional costs and lead time. So it can be tricky to organize your training sessions then. Reality cancels this almost completely as content is di digital and can be available. So now let's go to the items uh, our trainings must fulfill to be relevant. So what I call training imperatives. Uh, first, um, the trainings have to provide at least to some extent practical or hands-on experience, as it is the best way to make sure trainees remember what they are presented. Here too, virtual reality is best adapted to that as we can create interactions of any level of complexity. We are free to design uh, really the world as we see fit. Of course, when training or working on potentially powered on high voltage products, uh, people's safety is paramount. Uh, and to me, this is the most important aspect of virtual reality as we eliminate completely the safety risk of training on a live, uh, meaning power down product. Um, the last item uh, I call no trade off on content and details uh, is really about refusing to be limited by the training tools we use or that we will use. Um, uh, when when it comes to present product details. Uh, once again, virtual reality is perfect here as you can natively show and explore any 3D model. So reaching that point, reaching that point, in the end, we had to find a product in GE Renewable Energy Catalog that will enable us to review all these training constraints and imperatives against virtual reality tools. Uh, so we went to a power transformer as it ticked all the checkboxes. Uh, as an example, a power transformer is not something you buy every day. It's large and uh, there are a lot to explain of what's uh, happening inside it. So uh, from a training perspective, it's, uh, it was really a best case. So uh, if we can move to the uh, next slide, please. Okay, so next slide. Thank you. So uh, very classically at that point, we went through a call for Tender to select a, a partner to help us implementing our vision of the VR power transformer training module. We, we tried hard to be exhaustive regarding the details 
of both the content and interactions we expected. And uh, candidate companies, uh, sorry Guillaume, and uh, basically I'm glad you, don't, you are not listening to what I'm saying, but candidate companies had to go through a lot of text, uh, a bunch of it. So uh, it, we had, of course, a scorecard to rate the answers and uh, Onyx uh, won the race fair and square. Uh, but on top of that, um, they demonstrated a deep understanding of our business descriptions and needs. Uh, and uh, that um, contributed to make the difference. Uh, and that's it. Uh, that gives me the excuse to uh, hand over to Guillaume now. We've um, just covered the, the Onyx understanding of the business needs in the call for tender, and we're handing over to you. So thank you, Eze. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I think the the main idea of the of the discussion was to. Uh, was to discuss about how to design a, a successful pilot, and uh, and Jose, I uh, have said it. I think the first part of uh, of uh, having a successful pilot is to uh, to have a good understanding of the of the business needs, um, <clears throat> and that's uh, that's really a critical part of uh, designing a successful VR application because. Okay, VR is a, a, a nice technology, uh, but this is a usage of technology that is very important uh, because if you want to do marketing, you would go, I believe, to go marketing, to, you would look for marketing experts. If you want to do uh, uh, technical trainings within the industrial world, uh, you need to look for people having uh, skills within the industrial world with industrial knowledge uh, because it's the backbone of uh, successful co collaboration. So actually, this is the second point of my slide. It's uh, whatever you do in VR, is competency is the key. Of course, VR competency, VR development skills are the, let's say, base layer. Uh, in this case, the industrial knowledge and the technical knowledge is really the backbone of the successful collaboration because you don't need to explain all the industrial constraints, all the industrial you know know-how uh, before going in before going the, to the to the implementation, and that's really the key. You can do marketing with VR, so my advice would be go and look for marketing experts. If you want to go for the training part, uh, go for training experts. Uh, of course, they need to have the development skills, but they need to have around all the all the context knowledge my first point was also about the uh, project management process so you you can see here uh, we have put some two screenshots of the of the training i think the idea was not to go with uh, with the audience through all the details of, uh, of of the training it was really the key factors and the key success factor and the key success factor in our project was the project management process and within the industrial world, and for industrial projects, V-cycle process, project management process, does work very well. It's, uh, it's not as trendy as Agile or other uh, project methodology. But uh, when we discuss this with Jose, uh, it's, uh, it's really key uh, to know where you're going. And I think uh, 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 Jose and his team at General Electric did a great job on that knowing what they wanted uh re writing some uh, some uh, uh specific kind of specification so that uh the roadmap is quite clear uh of course we always need to keep some agility we need to keep uh especially as a as a xr production unit we need to keep some flexibility because we dis discover things with the with the users some but this is uh, at the margin this is at the margin. So uh, VR projects are software projects, uh, and within the industrial world, traditional project process like uh, PMP or V-cycle process does work very well. And it's a, it's a key learning for, for uh, on our project. The third point uh, we wanted to highlight is uh, the customization. The customization, uh, um, customization of an industrial platform, uh, like the inactive one, is, uh, is the key to get the right interfaces and the right inf interactions. 
let me explain. Uh, thanks to the interactive platform, we have some templates giving uh, all the basic interactions uh, with a very high quality level, which are standardized uh, and which are just pick and place. So that's very good for quality and for efficiency. Now uh, we know that every uh, context is different, every equipment is different. And here we're dealing with, a, with an equipment, industrial equipment, which is quite mass massive. Uh, with dedicated tool, uh, with dedicated constraints, and uh, and this is, I think, the, also the added value of uh, companies like Onyx uh, via de development agencies to add to the standard templates uh, uh, with uh, some industrial know-how uh, and VR know-how. What are the right interfaces? What are the right interactions? that we need to customize to get the user buy-in, to get the operator buy-in, to get the trainer buy-in and to ensure the success of deployment. Because we know that without, uh, without buy-in from the teams that will use it, there's no deployment possible. So third factor really important is customization. Of course, it means uh, that uh, the industrialized layer of basic interaction is also very important. And this leads to the, to the last point, the quality tracking. Uh, VR production is mainly software development. Uh, so when we talk about software development, we need to follow the guidelines or the best practice, uh, the best in class software development practice. Uh, Everything from unit testing, uh, performance testing, uh, every good practice you can put in place uh, to ensure your software quality quality is uh, is good to take into account to make sure that you produce something that is scalable, that is maintainable, and that you shoot for the long term. And it's very important for the industrial sector to uh, to shoot for the long term. So really, this was uh, the, the the last success factor we wanted to share with uh, with Jose. Uh, so long story short, project management process, agility and flexibility is good, but uh, a V cycle process for this uh, kind of uh, project works very well. Keep some flexibility, but V cycle is good. Know what you do before implementing it. Competency is key. Go and look for experts uh, uh, and, and people that, under, that and people that uh, who understand in which area you're working and what would be the the, the business you're uh, you're in. Customization to get the user buy-in, taking advantages of the of the uh, layers of uh, uh, of uh, standard interaction and interface, but don't hesitate to customize com customize it to get the buy-in. And last but not least put the quality on top to uh, to shoot for the for the middle term when you design the pilot uh, the idea is to to go forward for uh, to go uh, further to go further than the pilot in uh, several versions and maybe for several years uh, so uh, investment in quality is never a bad thing so uh, this was uh, the the main key success factors we wanted to highlight with Jose, and this ends our uh, our presentation, Graham. Uh, I don't know if Jose maybe wants to add something on on what I said. I don't know if Jose can hear me. Uh, I definitely cannot hear him. I can hear you. <laughs> hear you? Yes. Any, anything yeah. you want to add, Jose? Uh, well, uh, I think we um, we covered the thing. Uh, Pretty, pretty much because, uh, you know, once again, um, I will add that uh, it's trivial to say, but, you know, let's face it, communication is key. Uh, that is to say, you have to understand uh, the feedback that your partner will give you in terms of technical constraints, feasibility, that kind of things. Um, but also on our side, on GE side, to explain uh, our business as far as we can, make sure there is no uh, misunderstandings or assumptions that uh, must not take place, that kind of things. And uh, if I had to summarize one thing that went well with Onyx, that's the thing. Communication was really, really awesome. And we didn't, uh, you know, uh, we didn't lose time in, oh, let's go back to these specifications and let's explain everything. No, that was, uh, really straightforward. 
I'll just really cut that super short for Guillaume, but he's really talking about communication being crucial there. I think, um, and I'm sorry, I'm moderating a bit, but I think that's um, from all sides, isn't it? You need to get everything at the start, expectations, understanding, very, very clear, because only then will you get a, a project sort of successfully moving. That's right. Uh, to once again, goal here is to avoid uh, losing time, you know, and uh, you know, once again, it, it's trivial, but uh, the more you wait, and the more, in, the more important the um, corrective actions will be. You know, uh, that's that's uh, the, the stuff we avoided there.